And then um, this is sort of a this is a small-ish project, but um, one that is not quite finished. And I'm I'm sort of curious as to where it's going to go. But this is the Life Straws for Mumbai project. This is Mumbai, and this project came together like really quickly. Um, but it started mostly because you know I think we've all seen the Life Straw, and and it's been all over the press. And the individual Life Straw, the like cigar-shaped small one, um, I personally you know I think it's an amazing feat of engineering, but there are, are some things wrong with it that I think Vestergaard Franson is very aware of. The fact that you don't know if it's working as you're using it. You don't know when it doesn't work anymore after however many liters. So um, they've since just very recently launched um, or released the family, the Lifestraw family system, which is, if you can go forward, Sammy. Thanks. So this is the original, the, the personal version. One more. Thanks. Um, this next slide's huge, it's going to take forever to load, but um, the family version is essentially the same technology, but it works within a household, and it uses this bucket, and it's, it has a bigger capacity, it, it filters, I think, 15,000 liters, um, and again, it still doesn't have a monitor monitoring system, um, but the capacity is much greater, and for the amount of water that it filters, it's much more cost-effective. So uh, I had gone to Vestergaard Franson and said, you know, first of all, Project H wants to fund a batch of these. It started with that. Um, and then we discovered that they have only tested the Life Straw personal and family systems in rural contexts. So they've only tested it on, on rural water, um, which is, for India in particular, I mean, how many super, super dense squatter and slum settlements, settlements are there in Mumbai that have just as dire of water issues um, than, you know, some of the rural villages? So um, it quickly turned into, okay, yeah, we want to do this donation, but we also want to want to help um, in your ability to see where this thing works and how well it works. So we got in touch with a group from uh, Berkeley. They're based at UC Berkeley. It's a group of engineers, and all they do, it's a, they're a nonprofit based at the university, um, but all they do is testing and um, user implementation-based surveys for point-of-use water filters. So we had gone to them and said, we have this, this batch of, of life straws. We have 100 of them funded. Um, and we have a community that, that we want to distribute them to. But we want you to partner with us so that you can test it and go back to Vestergaard France. And it works well for everyone. So it became this sort of three-way partnership. Um, the 100 life straws are going to be delivered in December. And the group from Berkeley will be there in January to do, they have all these educational programs, and um, so they're going to decide which of the families will be the best partners in providing feedback. And then um, they're actually going to, s this was sort of a point of, of debate, but they're actually going to sell them to the families at a very reduced price. But we decided on this because um, Vestergaard Franson has, has found that whenever they give the life straws away, they don't get the best feedback. They don't get critical feedback. They get like, like they'll go to the families a year later and say like, oh, you know, how's that thing that we gave you? And they're like, oh, it's great. We love it. Thanks for the present. Um, but when the families are actually, when they've invested in this thing, they, they take better care of it. They're much more critical about how well it's working for them because they know they've put their own two, three, four dollars into it. So in December, they're going to, um, they're going to sort of spearhead the whole implementation and um, user survey process. And then this is the Design for Education project, which Helene, I'm sure, has, or I hope, has talked to you about. Um, this is the Katamba School in Uganda. And this started as, well, it is an Architecture for Humanity project. And I don't want to put him on the spot, but the, the person who built the new school is sitting back there. He teaches in the architecture department here. That's Matt Miller. Um, so this is the existing school. It's, it's, I mean, you can tell it's not wonderful, um, the new school is wonderful. Um, but I was there with Matt this past summer for f five or six weeks and um, hadn't actually intended for this to become a Project H project. But while I was there, I, I ended up teaching a couple of the math classes and um, doing some interviews with the headmaster and the, the teachers and, and some of the kids and realized that you know they're getting this gorgeous, brand new school. And they're part of this process of, of um, sort of you know, being a part of the, the collaboration um, to create a new space for their learning. So as Project H, which is mostly product design based, my thought was, you know, how can we complement this new gorgeous building that's 
that's just so much more efficient and, and works so much better, how can we complement that with things and tools and toys and processes within the classroom at a smaller scale to make their learning experience that much, that much richer? If you can go forward. So I think I just have a couple images here. This is their, one of their current classrooms. One more. This is in their, one of their math classes. Next. Okay, these are their current, this is their desk. And um, you know, there are three students sitting at every desk. Their materials are mostly, well, there's textbooks, but they don't own the textbooks. The, the school does, and they hand them out every day. Next, please. And so this is one of their textbooks um, that I gave to Helene. Um, so I came back from this and and st started to think about you know what w how the best way to approach this problem was. This school in particular, all the kids are AIDS orphans. So you know whether or not that makes it a special case is is sort of up for debate. But the way that we've been approaching it, and I think Helene will agree with me, um, is that. In a lot of ways, kids are kids, and math is certainly universal, and kids this age, and we're talking about elementary education here, um, elements of play and of being a kid are pretty universal. So we started to look at you know, how we could design a toy for math education that was, first and foremost, would serve the Katamba School, and so we've been using the Katamba School as a case study. Um, but beyond that, you know, how can you design something that is universal enough that it could be applied. Maybe the material is different. Maybe the maybe it's a retail product. Maybe the distribution channel is different. But how can you design like a central concept or system that can work for Katamba that you could scale in other ways for other contexts? So for let's say um, like a charter school in Harlem, or or even something you could sell off the off the shelf at Target as a toy that parents could buy for their kids that would be fun, um, but would also teach basic math concepts. So this is what Helene has been working her butt off on, um, along with a really awesome group of designers from New York who, who collectively make up the New York chapter. Um, and, and this is also the project that we just won the, the Idea Blob grant for. So if you can go to the next one. And then as part of this, this is, um, Helene took, I think she scanned this in. This is an image of the little cell phone cards, like in Uganda, you know, it's all pay as you go. So when you go to buy phone credit, they, they give you this thing, you scratch off the whatever, silver stuff, and you put in the code and you have credit on your phone. So we started to think, and we are continuing to explore, you know, what's, what's local to the school? This is one of the materials that, I mean, it has a ton of numbers on it, and this is kind of a, an extreme example, but how can, you, how can you take the things that are familiar and available and possibly even waste products and and use those as material for this design. Um, particularly for the Katamba School, since we're using this as our case study, we want to make sure that it's familiar, that it's locally manufacturable, and that potentially it could also serve as um, as an enterprise, something that could create jobs and something, or maybe not, maybe it's not jobs, maybe it's um it's a thing that is sold and creates profits for the school. Um, but we're, we're trying, this is going back to my previous point about the hippo roller, we can design this really great thing, but we also want to think about what the enterprise is that supports that and how in the long run this can be a social, socially sustainable um, enterprise for the local community. If you can go to the next, please. And then this is just one of Helene's many collages of lots of concepts and thoughts. This is where we started, and I mean, you don't have to look at all this stuff too carefully, but we did a lot of research on you know, what the current market was for math toys. We made a lot of trips to Walmart, Helene's new favorite place, and looked at you know, what was currently available in the US now, um, comparing that to, to the Ugandan case study. And then we also did a lot of kind of um, theory-based research on education, like constructionism and uh, math manipulatives and learning by building and, um, and how there are a lot of math theories that, that champion this idea that you can only learn quantitative ideas by building and making things. So that's, that's kind of where we started. Next, please. 